Breaking news, we just confirmed all 159 Georgia counties have completed their counting of election results. Neither Senate candidate cleared the 50% mark, so there will be a runoff at the U.S. Senate race between incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican candidate Herschel Walker. That election will be on December 6th. Right now, control of the U.S. House and Senate both up in the air. It's 48-48. Many races still too close to call. It could be days, even weeks, before we have full results. NBC's Bree Jackson is in Washington with the latest. Control of the House and Senate remains up in the air this morning as both parties pick up crucial wins. In Pennsylvania, voters elected Democrat John Fetterman to fill the seat of a retiring Republican. I'll be the next U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. It was a big night for Democrats in the Keystone State as Josh Shapiro won his bid for governor. Abortion was top of mind for the party. A woman's right to choose one. In a neighboring state, Ohio, Trump-backed Republican J.D. Vance won a highly competitive race. We've had a good night in the Ohio Republican Party, haven't we? Wow. Although it was not the red wave Thank that some predicted this midterm, Democrats outperformed during an election cycle that historically does not favor the party in power. In the House, Virginia's Abigail Spanberger retained her seat in a swing district. We must recommit ourselves to the cause of our country. Republicans believe they'll secure enough seats to flip control of the House. NBC News exit polls show inflation was a top issue for Republican voters. It is clear that we are going to take the House back. But some races are too close to call. In Georgia, incumbent Governor Brian Kemp emerged victorious. It looks like the reports of my political death have been greatly exaggerated. But the battle for Georgia's U.S. Senate seat remains in the balance, as does the balance of power in Washington. President Biden made calls to congratulate winning Democrats, and we do expect to hear from Mr. Biden in some form later today. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. Thank you, Bree. There is so much as play. If you missed it, Ron Johnson, Republican in Wisconsin, has secured that seat in the Senate. So the outstanding states are Arizona, Nevada, and here we are, Georgia. 11 Live Savannah Levins has been watching the numbers in our Senate race, looking deeper into the county by county. There is a lot happening. Let me see if I hear you now, Savannah. All right, uh, she's, she's working on her mic, but this is where we're at right now. 49 to 49% deadlocked, about a 35,000 vote spread, but all we need to know is nobody I mean, reached the 50% threshold to stop a runoff election. Look at that number for Chase Oliver, the third party candidate. That's 81,000 voters who went that direction. So these two campaigns are going to try to figure out how do we get maybe some of those 80,000 votes uh, to, to go one way or the other, Savannah. A lot's gonna happen in the next four weeks. That's right, now we're cooking with gas, Cheryl. So at 4.30 this morning, there were still about 30,000 votes that still needed to be tabulated uh, in the uh, Georgia Senate race, including really in in some uh, red-leaning counties, Paulding, for example, and Fayette. Now it looks like we're all caught up there, but we want to take a look at kind of how uh, the different counties broke down. And if we switch to this map right here, you can see the darker the color, the more votes that party got. So let's look at DeKalb, for instance. You can see Warnock got a whopping 84% of the vote there. Pike County, Walker getting a whopping 84%. Also interesting, I think, to compare to the 2020 presidential election. When you look at all these different counties, and by the way, we do have this map up on 11alive.com if you want to kind of play around with it yourself and take a look. But we're seeing Warnock and Biden really kind of having the same percentage of, of vote. Uh, but what we're seeing is Walker kind of being behind what Trump got in a lot of these counties. Now, political pundits kind of thought that that would be expected. They predicted that Walker might have a harder time pulling the votes that he needed because of concerns about experience and then some of those personal issues that were making headlines. But clearly, I mean, he did get enough of the vote here to now what it looks like is go into a runoff. And now the balance of power is really, it looks like, going to come down to Georgia in the end of all this. And we spoke to uh, political experts all morning about this, and they said with this runoff in Georgia, we're expecting a pretty high voter turnout, whereas most runoffs you 
don't necessarily see that. But with the balance of power and the U.S. Senate kind of at risk here, at stake here, we are expecting a lot of people to show up, both Democrats and Republicans in droves, in the hope that they will tip the scale for their party, Cheryl.